Hey everybody, MTG Noob here, bringing you a release M13 draft and pack one, pick one, what's up now, opening a money card, and I'm happy. So I'm going to snap, take that. Um, other valuable treats in the pack, Augur of Bolos, Ring of uh, Evos Isle, the bat is pretty sweet. Nothing else really red in this pack, so I'm very happy about this pick. So let's do this damn thing. Okay, uh, we can follow it up. Arctic Avon is really a bomb. Just straight up a bomb. Um, there's really nothing in red that I would take. This is very hit or miss. I am kind of considering red-black... I already sent, you know, an okay blue signal. I'm going to be fighting for blue, so I'm just going to pass this Arctic Avon. Black-red always seems to be my color of choice. I really do like it. Uh, it seems like white and blue are going to be open, though. Uh, Rise from the Grave versus Turn to Slag. I think Rise is a little bit stronger since it's uncommon. Um, so I'm just going to take the rise here. I'm going to force red and black. And here we get an arms dealer, which picking him up this early means I can probably get some decent red later on with goblins. Chandra's Fury is not so bad, but I don't really like it. There's a lot of titanic growths going around, so I have to keep that in mind as well. Okay, so, we're pretty happy uh, opening that Thundermaw Hellkite, since I usually tend not to open really saucy rares, at least in draft. If you've watched a lot of my drafts, you'll know that about me, that I'm that guy that just opens door to nothingness 400 times and then just goes, Why don't I ever open anything good? Whammy. Okay, a uh, few picks here. The black ring is very strong. It looks like I'm leaning more towards a red deck. Here's a goblin, which probably won't, might or might not come back. Blue definitely looks open, but like I said, I've already committed to this uh, archetypes of black red. Fire on is good, but I already have two five drops. I don't want to go too crazy. So it's a pick between the black ring and the furnace whelp. I'm tempted to take the Furnace Whelp. I think a 2-2 flyer in a format with a lot of flyers is pretty strong. It also looks like I have a few different flyers. The Black Ring giving Regenerate is pretty uh, good too. I'm going to take the Furnace Whelp because I don't want to give a clear uh, symbol that red is open. Okay, so here we see a Mind Sculpt. Uh, prized Elephant is really nice and tends to be hard to deal with. 4-4 four, for four, 4 is usually very fun to say, but also very hard to deal with. You have a Walking Corpse who is decent and a Volcanic Strength. We look like we're later game than early Rush with the Black Red deck. I think I'm going to pick up this Mind Claw Shaman. Uh, sometimes he's a blowout, sometimes he's just a bear. But we'll see if he's any good. Okay, the only pick here is Walking Corpse. I don't like it over Disentomb. There is a pretty decent white card still here, and Farseek is always nice, but I'll take the Walking Corpse. Ooh, another Furnace Whelp. Well, if we were going the crazy, uh, I think Tormented Soul is much better in the Exalted style deck. I don't mind picking up another one of these. I would like to pick up some goblins at some point, but I feel the furnace well is much stronger. Okay, here's our pack. We don't have enough dudes to really make this good. I mean, we do have a lot of flyers, but it's on a 5 drop. I'm just going to hack the blue ring. Uh, it gives hexproof. We'll never get the 1-1 one, one counter on it, but at least we can give some of our bombs hexproof if we have enough mana. Okay, so 4 drop or 5 drop, I'll take the 4 drop. Our deck needs to get uh, earlier, so to speak. I think I'll take the Smelt as a potential sideboard card over the Crater Eyes. 
I'm going to currently hide that. Okay, we have another Walking Corpse or a Chandra's Fury. Let's just read this one time. Four damage and one damage to each creature that player controls. I'm going to take the Fury over the Walking Corpse. And the reason I'm going to argue that is... That's a nice pickup. Uh, I think it's good at, against the Exalted decks. And I think it will deal with anything with one toughness. Uh, so if my opponent has a lot of one toughness creatures, then I'll be dealing with it. So hiding some stuff. I'm probably hiding the ring. I don't know if I'm going to play the Hexproof ring. We have uh, our late games pretty solid at this point with Thundermore Hellkite, Fire Elemental. Slumbering Dragon is not something I want to pick up. Uh, although it is a red rare. Cards in this pack that are very strong are Public Execution, Searing Spear, Mark of the Vampire. Uh, we opened another Augur of Volus, which would be great because I want to play that deck in Constructed, but currently I will take um, Public Execution or Searing Spear. I think we take the Execution because it's just a straight removal spell plus a trick. And Searing Spear, although is very good, it is a common and will have, we'll have more opportunities to snatch them up later on. Okay, so our deck's looking pretty good. We want to pick up a bunch of goblins to make Arms Dealer awesome. We also want to see cards like Murder. And we will take Essence Strains, even though our 5 is pretty stacked. I can see upgrading our essence strains over our like mind claw shaman okay trading post is pretty sweet this is a hell of a pack trading post i feel um is kind of a bomb but i don't think i'm going to go for it now we have to choose between flames of the firebrand which is great and we've already just passed um, a Searing Spear, so the person to our right is probably picking up some awesome stuff. Um, once again, I kind of want to go by the logic of Murders a Common and Flames of the Firebrand is an Uncommon. I think I'll have more opportunities to pick up a Murder than a Flames of a Firebrand. I think it's kind of a really close pick. This is just such a blowout in some instances. But this is just straight removal, so I gotta pick up the murder here. That's a card I really want in a deck like this. Okay, wow. What a pack, man. Uh, not really for us. I don't think we can splash in black and red. We can't splash this O-ring. So it's really between Sign in Blood and Rummaging Goblin. I have been wanting to pick up more goblins. I really would love to take the Sentinel Spider because it does a lot of work against us. It seems like a green is definitely coming our way. I'll take the Rummaging Goblin though. Okay. Now this is interesting. I am kind of bomby. Um, I don't think I'm very aggressive. I am also kind of we do have a bomb, so this might be worth it. Pay six mana for a th um, Thundermore Hellkite. But I think I'm a little bit more defensive, so I'm going to take the Giant Scorpion over the Search and the Reckless Brute. If we were sitting here with more or less a deck that wants to play an early game, I would have probably taken the Brute. If we were in like blue-black, I would have probably taken the Card Search. You can let me know what you would have done there. So, so far I'm pretty happy with the deck. There have been a lot of close picks. Okay, there's the red ring in this pack. And nothing really else for us. I think I'll upgrade to the red ring. Giving some of these dudes haste and growing them is really strong. Mine Rot does fit well in our deck, but once again, it's a common. So I think we'll have a lot of access to picking up mine rots and things of that nature. There's definitely some picks in here you can argue with me. So in the comments, by all means, tear me a new one because I want to learn and I want to make sure I'm drafting well. And I find that it's really, really hard to 
always pick the right cards unless you're like a pro. Okay, I could take another Mind Claw Shaman, and this Mind Claw Shaman is actually going to be pretty strong against us since we have a lot of good, um, you know, kill spells right now. We have two good ones. We also have a Rise from the Grave. But I think the Dragon Hatchling kind of fits with our dragon type theme. Um, Switcheroo is an interesting card. Right now, I think I might pick this up over the Volcanic Strength. I know I'm going to get beat by a Volcanic Strength. This is the second one I've seen. But we'll just have to kill those creatures. And I do have a lot of big dudes. Switcheroo is good. I can't believe I got a Searing Spear this late. Okay, that's fine. I won't even talk about that. So uh, Okay, I can't believe it. the Searing Spear came back. Okay, why? Why not? Um, Switcheroo is very interesting and decent. Okay, it seems like this type of deck is cold on the ground to Kraken Hatchling, but I think I want the Jehadim Tome to draw cards. Yeah, I just tried to mumble that. Um, here's a Mine Rot for us. We are a little controlish. I can hack the Titanic Growth, but I'm going to pass on it. Uh, Wild Guest is interesting. I don't think we want it. I'll just hack a pretty hard to deal with creature for us. Sure, I don't want to get blown out by Trumpet Blast. But yeah, Switcheroo is a card that sometimes is amazing and sometimes is awful. And usually when you have cards like that, it's not the greatest. Okay, Disentomb, if I really need to protect any of my creatures. And we even get the Mountain coming with us. Okay, so hiding the Trumpet Blast right now. Let's open up a an awesome card like a Liliana or a Chandra even or something fantastic like a Fervor. No, that's not what I'm taking. Okay, if there was a murder in this uh, pack, I might take it, but I think I'm very fine with taking a public execution. You can argue that my curve is a little bit late, so maybe I want to sign in blood, but I don't think I want to sign in blood over that. I can also crack this uh, Krankos command to give more goblins to my arms dealer or even this battle jester but i think this public execution having two of those is a fine pickup i i always usually love red black as an archetype in draft i always try to draft it um ever since zendikar man let's get a nighthawk if we get a nighthawk i'm gonna be a happy camper uh ever since zendikar came out and i kind of figured out that black red was very strong on my own. I've always been happy to play the colors, and I don't think they'll disappoint in a deck like this. Okay. You know what? I don't think I want anything in this pack. I can take an Evolving Wilds. Mog Flunkies is probably the pick here, but I have a feeling this Mythic Rare is going to eventually be worth money. Um... You've already seen it in the show-and-tell kind of decks in, Le in uh, Legacy. So outside of taking an okay card for my deck, I think I'm just going to hack this uh, rare here. Just to, you know, even if it's a few ticks, it's a mythic. I kind of like it. Um, I may pay for that later on if I don't have enough goblins for my arms dealer. But, yeah. Don't kill me for that pick. Okay, here's a... Yeah, I think we want the Cower and Fear. Um, I think we're playing the style of deck where we're just trying to control it and win with a dragon. So I'll take the Cower and Fear. It's actually very good against some decks. It sucks against other decks. There's a outside shot. The Arsonist, the Sign of Blood, or the Ravenous Rats comes back. We see another Fairy Invader, so we got to keep in mind that the Fairy Invaders are... Flying. Okay, here's a foiled door to nothingness. And sleep. Jace's phantasm. Fairy invaders again. Ravenous rats. Um, foiled door. I don't think that's even a foiled door. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to hack the door to nothingness. I think we have 12 creatures. Ravenous rats probably fits pretty well in our deck. But sleep is such a blowout that I think I'm just going to take it. Uh, it's really good against us. Now, I know, like, I've kind of gone a little off-tangent 
with these last few picks, so please forgive me there. Uh, I'd gladly take another giant scorpion, but I think having two rummaging goblins is pretty sweet. We also have Gem of Becoming, um, and in a deck where we have a lot of five and six drops, I think I might take the Gem here because we have a switcheroo, which I would consider splashing. Um, but I think I'll pass on that. So it's Scorpion or Rummaging Goblin. We have currently two goblins. I think I'll take the Rummaging Goblin to try to force a few more goblins into the mix. Like if I can upgrade the Walking Corpse to like another Mog Flunkies or something like that, I will do that. Yeah, you know, it's it's release. You know, you wanna you wanna have a little fun, but you know, if you're gonna get past a potentially good mythic rare, you might wanna take it, get some ticks. I'll advocate my own bad pick there. All right, so right now we're at 13 creatures. That's with walking corpse. Um, I will gladly upgrade here to a goblin arsonist over this disentomb. Here's a pretty good turn to slag. I do like me some removal. The problem with decks like this is they tend to get blown out. Um, here's another gem of becoming and another walking corpse. I think I'll take the turn to slag. I think that pick might be a little bit loose, but hopefully we uh, are able to get in there. Okay, this guy wins games on his own. I think I'm safe at the three drop here because I have some stuff that'll, you know, I have double Searing Spear, so I'll just pick up the Entrancer so we don't get milled out by it. I know that's kind of like a hate pick, but that's a real strategy. Okay, so Cranko's Command comes back, as does the Battle Jester. I think I'll take the Cranko's Command here. Giving us two goblins is very good. Okay, nothing much going here. I'll take the Ring because... Them having a ring that gives hexproof is really not what our deck wants to do. Take this, just so we don't lose to that. Um, do you think I need to destroy any lands? Maybe a Cathedral of War, so I'll just take that. And we've got a Gemma becoming. So we'll uh, see, another Smelt is good. Pretty happy with this. I think our colors were pretty well determined when we opened our first pick, Thundermall Hellkite. Okay, so let's get to the build. Uh, we were trying to force black, I think, a little bit. We could have really benefited from a Nighthawk, but we didn't see any. So that's the only thing that's a little bit worrisome, that somebody else might have it. Okay, so let's bring in our... Goblin sub theme. So that's where we want to be first. And then we will bring in our Thundermore Hellkite. Okay, and we have our red removal, which I feel is pretty solid. There's some cards I might, you know, downgrade here. bring in my other creatures and then we will look at the black okay so furnace whelps now canyon minotaur is an option but uh, you know i don't know if i want to play him currently so is this mind claw shaman this fire elemental and this turn to slag these are all my options that are you know, most likely making it in the deck. Okay, let's look at our black. Scorpion is good. Blood, Blood Hunter Bat. And these removal spells. Murder. Double Public Execution. And we'll see if we want to play any of our card draw slash artifacts over anything else. Now, Walking Corpse is another option, and Rise from the Grave, I would think, is definitely playable with all of our removal. 
as is cower and fear. Okay, so right now we have nine creatures, so I definitely need to bring up more creatures. I don't think I'm going to play the red ring that gives haste. Um, it doesn't feel very strong. I could be wrong. The gem of becoming will allow us to splash an alternate win condition or splash a switcheroo. Currently, I don't like either of those options. And then, obviously, the hatchling. So, of this, I'm going to put in the creatures that I feel are strongest. I think Fire Elemental is just a solid guy. Um, I think we're a little bit weak at the 2-drop. So, I will be bringing in this Walking Corpse. That puts us up to 11 creatures. Mine Claw Shaman is okay, but I kind of feel like he's going to be random. So, I'm going to put him in the board. Canyon Minotaur is a uh, solid 4-drop, but he does get outclassed a lot in this format. So I think I'm going to keep him in the board as well and run the Tome to draw a card over him. And then we have room for a few more cards. I think I like the Turn to Slag. I think I like the Hatchling. Just because it goes with our kill things in the air and fly through on the air. And it's between the ring and the mine rot. Right now we have a ton of red creatures. I think the ring, the ring is going to take the cake. Okay, so that's where I'm looking at. The cards that are memorable that were sitting on the bench are the mine rot, the mine claw shaman or shaman. And the Minotaur, the cards we might want to bring in are Chandra's Fury to deal with one toughness stuff, double smelt, disentomb. Uh, we, I, I don't usually like playing disentomb in the main deck, especially when we have Rise from the Grave. It's just so much better if they kill our guys. Okay, so let's uh, add some land here. We don't have any specialty lands. I think they're going to say like 11-6 or 10-7. 10-7 it is. Uh, the only double black spells we have are Murder and Cower and Fear. And I think we're more or less going to hit double black later on. We do have a lot of pump effects in red. So I might want to... Not Rummaging. Arms Dealer has Sacrally. I might want to keep the 10-7. But there's sometimes when you really need Murder... So I'm going to go with 9-8. It's probably safe, but that is a lot of black mana. No, you know what? I'm going to leave the 10-7 and see what they suggest. Okay, so let's look at the final curve. There were a few picks that were arguable. Obviously, this one, um, not taking a mod clunkies over it, you know, really would have benefited the deck. I'm aware of that, but... You know, I, I like this card. It's pretty sweet. And putting in this, or this, or this over the current cards we have. And maybe splashing the, with the gem of becoming, splashing like a switcheroo or an entrancer would have been interesting. But I don't think necessary. Alright, so I'm going to submit this and we're going to go to round one. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. And check out the website.